Hello, and welcome to this module entitled vSphere Storage Appliance, a shared storage for everyone. This particular module is designed to give you more information about the new release uh, of the, or the first release of the vSphere Storage Appliance 1.0. In this particular uh, presentation, we'll go ahead and go through some market background as to why VMware is bringing out uh, this particular offering. We'll give you a brief introduction into the storage appliance. Uh, which we will uh, use an acronym VSA probably quite a lot in this presentation. We'll talk a little bit about the storage appliance ba uh, basics, uh, what its uh, uh, design principles were, and some of the th other things that we'll keep in mind. And then we'll talk a little bit about how it works and what it's designed to uh, bring uh, to the end user environment. And then uh, as a final piece, uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the, uh, the packaging elements uh, related to uh, this particular offering and how it's licensed uh, to users. As when we bring out new technologies, that usually comes up, and we want to make sure that everybody's comfortable uh, with the uh, storage appliance uh, licensing and packaging. So let's get into a little bit of uh, the market background related to uh, the storage appliance. And the first thing that we see as uh, customers are uh, out there in the market and wanting to experience virtualization is we often ask, what are some of the hindrances or challenges that they have uh, related to uh, expanding? And for some customers, uh, it's not just expanding, but for the newer prospects that we're shooting at, what are some of those things that are challenges that they need to get beyond in order to experience virtualization? And for some of those folks, it's not just the base virtualization, but it's also getting uh, some additional capabilities beyond just, hey, I can create virtual machines. It's looking at things like, hey, how can I leverage high availability? How can I leverage live migration and movement? And then how can I do some of these other characteristics that could help me uh, create a lot of value within my environment? And so generally in this uh, SMB space where we're targeting uh, the storage appliance uh, solution, uh, we want to go ahead and help them uh, with a variety of these characteristics and make sure that uh, just because they don't have shared storage uh, doesn't mean that uh, they're not able to get all these great benefits of virtualization. And also, you know, one of the things we really look at is we're trying to bring technologies that we offered for the enterprise for quite some time uh, down into uh, a smaller class of customer uh, that can go ahead and really utilize these features just like some of the larger organizations do. So you know you have to uh, make sure that uh, folks are able to understand and utilize these technologies uh, as they continue to uh, move forward with their IT uh, infrastructures. So taking a little bit further look into the uh, market uh, that we're trying to shoot at with the uh, storage appliance, uh, we can see that in the case of the SMB, uh, when they want to kind of unlock some of these additional capabilities around virtualization, uh, the hindrance of not having shared storage, um, it really kind of uh, relates to a couple of different challenges uh, that they've seen. So number one, they may not have a lot of familiarity with shared storage, you know, how to set up uh, a more advanced SAN. They may not uh, have that particular skill set uh, in place and therefore cannot leverage uh, some of those more advanced capabilities even if they'd like to. They may have uh, tight budgets in place, so purchasing more advanced uh, hardware configuration setups may not be in the cards uh, for every single uh, environment. And then the last piece is some just may not be aware that you know, with a shared storage environment, you can create some additional value beyond just the core uh, virtualization aspects. So if we're able to go ahead and look at this and uh, basically extend the capabilities uh, down to some of those SMBs, we have a lot of great opportunity here to offer um, greater capability without uh, forcing an uh, additional uh, purchase of or use of uh, uh, kind of more sophisticated shared storage hardware. And then we can also just help them uh, transition over time and move kind of to the next level pretty easily. Uh, and I'm going to show you how we're able to do that uh, with the uh, all new uh, vSphere storage appliance. So if we bring that storage appliance into the picture, we definitely want to uh, bring forward this notion of having storage for all. So now, regardless of what size customer that you are, you can go ahead and leverage uh, this uh, storage appliance that will go ahead and uh, enable you to create a shared storage uh, repository from the existing resources that you have. And we'll get into more specifics in just a second. But again, we want to lower your overall uh, capital costs. So if you're a new customer trying to get into this um, uh, kind of applicability of virtualization in your environment, this will help you right away uh, create a shared storage repository. Uh, it will lower costs for those of you who um, are more experienced within the virtualization environment. You may have a setup already, but you want to go ahead and um, further leverage this uh, internal uh, disk uh, technology within the uh, servers itself. We want to help uh, drop barriers to adoption. 
so folks can get started uh, as quickly and easily as possible. And then also we want to give you some of those uh, capabilities that you may have uh, not experienced uh, just yet. So things like vMotion, which is our live migration for moving uh, VMs from uh, machine to machine. Uh, our uh, HA technology, which would allow you to restart a, a virtual machine that has uh, died for whatever reason. And then even in the uh, larger cases, this will also help you experience things like our DRS, our distributed resource scheduler, uh, as we go ahead and um, look at uh, more advanced use cases. So, again, the primary use case that we have for this environment is to go ahead and look at uh, SMB-style customers, generally that are smaller, have two or three node configurations, but it is possible for the storage appliance to run in a remote, a remote office uh, type of scenario for larger customers, or maybe in even kind of a departmental scenario uh, for an enterprise class customer as well. And you can see there what we'll get into in just a second, uh, some of the um, description here, uh, the appliance living on each of these particular nodes, as you see in the picture here, and leveraging the internal disk of the servers that are already in place, rather than requiring the purchase of a new uh, piece of hardware. So if I get into some of the basics behind the uh, storage uh, appliance, this gets into uh, some further detail around what we think the value of this type of tool uh, is. So if you look at this from kind of a high level, uh, there's a number of different capabilities that are really helping the end user uh, kind of succeed in their mission of proliferating virtualization and utilizing new features. So number one, uh, five-click simplicity. Literally, to get this installed, it's a very easy install to get it set up, five clicks, sometimes less depending on the configuration that you're using. So really, just an easy way for folks to um, create value and then also save money at the same time by having this level of simplicity uh, in relation to the setup. And that's very much in contrast to some of the more uh, sophisticated and complexities uh, normally associated with uh, the creation of a shared uh, storage resource. In addition to uh, looking at uh, five-click simplicity, also looking at, as I mentioned before, a high availability without the need for shared storage. So of all the features that we have, one of the things that usually happens with customers that are of a certain size, generally a two-node or three-node configuration, you know, they could care less about server consolidation because it's not they're not looking for to virtualization in order to provide uh, consolidation. What they're looking to do is provide better availability characteristics. And without shared storage, we're not able to provide our HA technology so that we can handle the failover of a uh, vSphere host or a uh, virtual machine. And so with this, we're able to provide HA function to all of those uh, machines that are in the environment. And generally, when we're talking about using HA, which can handle these uh, unplanned uh, downtime scenarios or even some of the planned ones is uh, we're looking at uh, you know a virtualized environment that could exist with 20 VMs you know up to maybe 30 VMs uh, in the environment if you assume a, a 10 to 1 uh, consolidation ratio uh, depending on the hardware you may get even more virtual machines out of this style environment now in addition to that when you talk about what we're also able to provide this kind of world-class data center and this is a, a big thing that we've noticed over time is that customers, even of smaller size, still have the needs that we've seen other larger customers uh, have for some time. So that in addition to things like HA, vMotion, one of our best utilized features, is not able to be leveraged without a shared storage infrastructure. So now that we have this shared storage, we can use vMotion to do live migration. And not only do we do live migration for you know, just having to you know, move things around very dynamically, but there's actually some very specific and key use cases. One of those happens to be what we call maintenance mode. Maintenance mode is now available to the SMB style of customer or smaller customer because uh, we have the shared storage. And what maintenance mode is going to allow from a benefit side is we can go ahead and evacuate all VMs from one particular host, move them off to the other uh, two hosts, and therefore patch and update that machine, do whatever it is we need to do, and the end user who's accessing the VM, they have no concept that that other server is down. They are maintained in terms of their um, access to the uh, virtual machine. It can keep on doing what they need to do, and the IT folks can do what they need to do in relation to fixing or adjusting or updating that particular piece of hardware. And then when things are back in order, we can go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and balance back across uh, that particular environment. So a great use case here for folks that are wanting to look at, geez, how do I provide even better capabilities when it comes to how I deal with a patch Tuesday or something like that? Um, we can go ahead and easily handle this through a maintenance mode capability that we've offered, again, for the enterprise class customer for quite some time and now offer that uh, to smaller environments too. So hopefully you see some massive benefits in uh, doing that type of thing.
What I'm going to show you next is if we just drill down a little bit further uh, into uh, each of these particular bullet points, you can see some further level of detail uh, for the five-click simplicity, the HA technology, and also the world-class data center. So I went over these in, in pretty good detail, but again, you can see a lot of availability characteristics are kind of one side of the coin to the storage appliance. The other side of the coin gets into the simplicity factor. So simplicity and world-class uh, capabilities around availability and movement, uh, that is really the crux of what we're able to provide with the all-new uh, vSphere storage appliance. And so, you know, these should really, I think, these particular uh, pieces uh, apply to a lot of our customer base. You're having these challenges around, geez, how do I simplify and how do I provide the best availability possible to the environment, even when I'm maybe a smaller shop and I have a different set or class of needs than maybe uh, some of the larger uh, customers that are out there. So with that, um, I've talked a lot about the capabilities of this new uh, vSphere storage appliance. Let's go ahead and look at it in a little bit further detail and look at actually how it works and how it makes um, HA, vMotion, just shared storage overall possible uh, within the environment. So when you take a look at the core architecture of the uh, storage appliance, you see uh, that in all the pictures that we've drawn, we have uh, three hosts. Uh, we have uh, shared storage in that we're actually able to take the uh, storage uh, inside of the uh, servers, and then you have that uh, kind of blue uh, VM that's there. Uh, indicating that that could be a, a major portion or component r around the uh, storage appliance. So if I kind of highlight into these, you can see that we need these dedicated virtual machines or kind of appliances uh, to go ahead and run on each of the nodes where we're going to create this uh, storage appliance. So in this case, uh, as I mentioned before, we can go up to a three-node configuration. You can also have a two-node configuration as you like, uh, if you like. Obviously, one node doesn't work because there's no sharing involved there, uh, but you can have a two- or three-node configuration. And on each node that you have, you need to run the vSphere storage appliance on that particular node uh, in order to create uh, shared storage uh, for the environment. Now, as I blow this out a little bit, you'll also see that we go ahead and utilize the internal disk of the um, server itself. So those disks that are resident on the server, there's nothing that's uh, you know, a JBOT attach, a SAN attach, a NAS attach, anything like that. I'm using the disk that's inherent within the servers themselves. And so that gives the piece of, geez, I don't need to buy any additional hardware. Also, I'm using what I already have uh, in place. And as we know, as disk drive technology has moved along, generally there's a lot of good, uh, you know, uh, capacity under the hood for a lot of the servers that are out today. Uh, even the, uh, you know, some of the legacy servers have a fair amount of uh, disk space uh, available in order for us to go ahead and utilize uh, a technology like the, uh, the storage appliance. But again, you can see that as a result of my picture, I'm not adding any additional storage in order to make this work. I leverage what's already there, and that's part of the massive value that we get out of the, uh, the storage appliance. I build this out a little bit further, the other thing that you see too is that I'm clustering the storage across the nodes. So obviously this provides not only the ability to add capacity, but also helps me from the availability characteristics. So if I should lose one particular uh, node, uh, just because I do that doesn't mean the storage appliance itself is going to have a failure. I have redundancy built in place. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the form of the, the RAID that we offer, uh, but we can go ahead and enable the use of this uh, storage across the environment and also make sure we have the correct uh, protection mechanisms uh, in place in order to uh, make this fully functioning and to make sure that it has a complete uh, HA scenario. So with vSphere, we actually offer a number of different additions and kits for uh, customers to uh, leverage. And with the uh, storage appliance, you can actually use the storage appliance with uh, many of the, or just about all of the kits and additions that we have. However, the primary, I think, consumption model for this, given the fact that we can use two nodes or three nodes with the uh, storage appliance, will be for those folks that use uh, the Essentials Plus offering that we have. Essentials uh, Plus today, uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, it offers a three-host uh, configuration with up to two CPUs each. It has some additional capabilities around uh, vMotion, HA, data recovery, and it also offers a centralized version of the vCenter server. Uh, because of the makeup of the storage appliance and that configuration, we think that most folks are going to want to consume the appliance along with uh, Essentials Plus. And you'll see a little bit more around this when I get to some of the packaging elements that we get to a little bit later. You could also use this with the standard edition that we have. 
Uh, so you can go ahead and do that. And when you use, uh, again, either Essentials Plus or Standard with this appliance, that will enable you to use high availability in vMotion without having the need for more advanced um, shared storage hardware. In addition to that, uh, for some customers, they may want to go ahead and leverage this with uh, Enterprise or Enterprise Plus. Uh, if you go ahead and do do that, uh, that will also enable you on the enterprise side to uh, leverage things like fault tolerance and also our distributed resource scheduler, our load balancing capability, um, because you have that shared storage in place, so those are enabled. And then also at the higher end, you have the storage vMotion technology, which would allow you to do uh, a couple of things. Uh, storage vMotion allows you to fix uh, possibly uh, poor performance layouts that you have for your storage related to virtualization. It also allows you to do interesting things like if, I'm, uh, if I have an array that I either purchased and I bought a new one, or I have an array that's uh, coming off lease, uh, and I need to go to a new one, I can go ahead and utilize storage vMotion without any disruption moving the actual data associated with a virtual machine, not just the container itself like I move with vMotion. So again, the primary way I think people will consume this will be through the Essentials Plus offering because of just the configuration size. There will be some that use it with standard, but then you can use it with uh, Enterprise or Enterprise Plus. You could also use it in a remote uh, office scenario as well. Uh, there will be some other updates eventually to storage appliance to make it even more applicable in a robo type of environment, but you can also do that uh, today as well. Getting a little bit further detail into uh, what we're able to do and uh, what the storage appliance is able to do. So just from a compatibility perspective, you will need vSphere 5 in order to utilize the uh, storage appliance uh, 1.0. Uh, so we have to pick a version, obviously, to kind of set a baseline, and we've done that with version 5. So you can go ahead and utilize it there. Uh, in terms of uh, scalability, uh, if you need to add capacity to your storage appliance, uh, the way you'll do that is by increasing the uh, number of disks inside or changing the disks inside the uh, server itself. So again, remember, we're not using any external uh, capacity, NAS, SAN, JBOD, what have you. Uh, this has got to be server that's internal to the host uh, itself. In addition to that, uh, in terms of protection, uh, we do offer uh, two forms of RAID depending on the uh, particular uh, piece we're trying to uh, solve in terms of the, the challenge of availability. So to do a cross-node uh, RAID protection, uh, for those who are not familiar with RAID, we've done an array of independent uh, or individual disks. Uh, RAID 1 uh, cross-nodes in order to make sure that we have uh, protection against disk failure. And then we have RAID 5 that actually does uh, protection within the actual node itself so we could withstand the loss of a particular disk drive uh, as well. So some good availability pieces. The other side uh, beyond that, uh, going beyond VSA, the storage vMotion I mentioned before, if you're a larger uh, environment and you want to leverage that, or even in the case of uh, some smaller customers, we do have ways of uh, helping you migrate if uh, you move on from the uh, virtual appliance uh, into uh, a larger configuration. Uh, we have uh, ways of doing that for you, so it should be pretty seamless uh, to move from the, uh, the uh, vSphere storage appliance into a larger config uh, if you should do that over time, because we all know that today's small customers become to, uh, tomorrow's uh, larger customers. One other thing I want to say, too, about the storage appliance, uh, very important to read some of the release notes around this. The storage appliance will have a uh, very specific hardware compatibility list, or HCL, so there are some devices that are uh, qualified against this. And as you'd imagine with any 1.0 uh, implementation, um, it's a, uh, uh, a list that we have right now and will get uh, a lot longer uh, as we continue to proliferate. And that will actually get a lot longer very, very quickly. So you should see a, a certain hardware compatibility list uh, on day one. And then as we get uh, toward um, you know, a few months out, we'll get uh, some further uh, details uh, and uh, more information related to proliferating that hardware compatibility list. So let's look at a couple of uh, final elements related to uh, the uh, vSphere uh, storage appliance and get into a little bit more of the detail around the licensing and packaging. So the way uh, this will go ahead and work is you will go ahead and have this module that will uh, be enabled through vCenter server. So there's a, basically the way to uh, access the management interface through the vCenter server. Uh, you'll go ahead and uh, utilize the uh, license for the storage appliance based on a per instance uh, basis. So that uh, instance, you set up one uh, virtual, or excuse me, uh, one um, vSphere storage appliance uh, per the environment, uh, just like a, a vCenter server. And again, you can have a configuration that could uh, be up to three nodes or as low as uh, two nodes in the, uh, the implementation. So uh, basically, that, that will be your, your basic uh, alignment uh, for what we're doing. 
And then as we uh, sell this out to the customer base, there'll be two ways of consumption. Uh, number one will be an a la carte license. So this vSphere storage appliance does not come with any particular kit or addition. Uh, inherently, it's not part of any entitlement. It's basically viewed as a add-on to the environment, so you will need to purchase the uh, storage appliance, and you can apply that uh, to any of the, uh, the kits or additions that we have. And then, as I mentioned before, because we think it's such a natural fit uh, for our customer base, we're going to offer the uh, Essentials Plus kit along with the storage appliance as a bundle opportunity to buy. So you can go ahead and buy both of those in one shot, get your ability to provide shared storage for Essentials Plus from that initial purchase. So that will be a bundling opportunity that we think a lot of you uh, will see that is very attractive and something that you want to engage in uh, pretty, pretty quickly. And what that will do is uh, provide a, a good uh, introductory price as well, so there's a, a significant price break um, related to the purchase uh, in this particular model. Again, we think that this is going to be the, the primary route to market uh, for the, the storage appliance. One other thing that's also uh, to keep in mind is, uh, again, a piece we uh, looked at in the, uh, the vSphere module, uh, but the alignment of Essentials and Essentials Plus in terms of our packaging. I've referred to these a little bit uh, as we've gone out. We have two of these kits in the Essentials area. The one I focused on in this particular presentation is Enterprise, or excuse me, Essentials Plus, uh, because that is the one that's most applicable given that it has the live migration technology known as vMotion and also HA. But you can see here, uh, both Essentials and Essentials Plus offer the ability to leverage virtualization, get the CapEx and OpEx savings, allow the ability to uh, have centralized management. And then with Essentials Plus, again, you add live migration, HA, and also the data recovery feature um, to the uh, overall environment. Now, in addition to that, you do have the ability to use uh, the storage appliance with some of our other uh, kits. These are some of the acceleration kits that we use for taking people from Essentials and Essentials Plus into a larger environment or those just getting started with virtualization that might be a little larger than Essentials and Essentials Plus. You can utilize standard Enterprise or Enterprise Plus acceleration kits. They combine the server-based uh, software with the um, advanced management or the uh, actually the basic management of vCenter Server, kind of a one-stop shop ability and need to buy. You get one of those uh, per customer site, and then you can go ahead and add the storage appliance uh, onto that. So I think in this particular model, um, the one of the ways moving forward is that for those people that are looking at the standard acceleration kit, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, possibly have a lot of storage appliances uh, tied to that as well. And you can see there, these particular kits, um, they are actually, uh, they allow you to actually expand upon them uh, over time, and they're uh, priced out in a uh, per CPU model because it follows the rest of how we purchase uh, vSphere uh, overall. Well, with that, I do want to uh, end the comments around the storage appliance, but also remind you that uh, we do have an upcoming uh, show around uh, VMware called uh, VMworld. Uh, this is a great way for you to get more information, not only on uh, cloud topics, but anything that we do here at VMware. Uh, we actually have two shows that are coming up, one at the end of August in the United States in Las Vegas, uh, and then one a little bit later on for those of you who are listening abroad uh, in the uh, in MIA uh, region in Copenhagen. And what we'll do is we'll explain the latest and greatest, not only of the storage appliance, but all the other technologies uh, that you've heard about in the launch today, as well as other pieces that VMware offers. So you can get the latest and greatest information. But two things that I think are the most valuable things around uh, VMworld, number one, the ability for you to go ahead and network with other uh, users and get fir firsthand details, not just from VMware, but from other people who have actually tried our technology and use it. And then the other piece is the uh, labs that we offer at VMworld. So we offer the ability to go through a, a massive lab environment uh, that we set up and customize uh, for a, a variety of different topics, uh, depending on what your need is. And you can go ahead and kick the tires on any of the technologies that we have. And so the storage appliance and a lot of the vSphere technologies uh, and everything part of cloud infrastructure will definitely be part of uh, these events uh, as they're coming up. So definitely uh, go ahead and register for that and get more details uh, at VMware.com in order to uh, see what we're able to offer this year. So with that, I'm Mike Adams, uh, and I'd like to uh, thank you for listening to uh, today's session and this module around uh, the vSphere storage appliance. I invite you to listen to some of the other modules as well to further understand uh, all the new technologies that we have as part of this cloud infrastructure uh, set of uh, technologies from VMware. Thanks very much.